Hello friends, today's video is on a topic that is incredibly close to my heart. This was something I struggled with so much in so many different ways through my recovery journey and out the other side of it at places and in ways too. I was confronted with a life that I had established very much inside my eating disorder and so when I came out of that recovering place and I was recovered, I sort of woke up to this life and recognised that there are all sorts of elements of it that actually didn't feel like the life that I wanted to be living. And I have over the last few years been really enjoying and embracing, challenging those thoughts of behindness and actually just recognising where I'm at and looking at where I'd like to be and making the changes to move ever aligned and closer to that place. So I'm going to dive straight in with the first point that I want to make, and that is that it's okay. You are not alone. Feeling behind, I really do believe, is such a shared experience and emotion in the context of recovery. And I just want anybody who has clicked on this video because they resonate with that phrase of feeling behind, feeling lost, to know that it's okay. It is absolutely all right that that is how you're feeling at the moment, that that is where things are at, and that you are not alone in this. As I said, I struggled with this so much. I felt like I was watching friends go out and do things and live and move forwards in their lives in ways that I just wasn't and not even wasn't able to it was also not wanting to and I felt all sorts of different complex emotions around that behindness and that lostness both in the sense of in some ways not being able to be free and go and do those things but also being in a place where I recognised I lacked even the want to go and do those things and I wanted to want I wanted to want and I wanted to go and do the things. And I feel like from this perspective, I really get that feeling. I really get on a visceral level how scary and overwhelming it can be to feel behind, to feel lost. And that there can be all sorts of different layers and depths to that. And I so, so want you to know that it is okay and that you are not alone in this. The second point I want to make moves on really naturally from that. And this is, I think it's really important in life and in recovery to allow yourself to feel the feelings that are coming up. Recovery is a huge process. It is a physical, mental and emotional healing journey. And within and along that journey, there is very often a roller coaster of emotions that come up. When we stop and we put down disordered behaviours, we often open the gates with space and time to feelings and those feelings are there to be felt because it is only by feeling them that you are able to move through and heal from them. And therefore, this is why it's so important in recovery that you allow yourself to feel how you are feeling, that you validate your emotions, that you allow yourself to be in the place that you are and that you show yourself compassion. And now compassion is a word that has a lot of power to it. And this is because, yes, compassion means allowing yourself to feel and to be. But it also means continuing to do what you need to do. And it's so relevant in recovery because what's key here is that, yes, you need and should allow yourself to feel the way that you feel. Those feelings are valid. But it is also imperative that you are continuing to do the things that you need to be doing for your recovery. I know this was something that was huge for me. When I felt suffocated by the lostness, suffocated by that behindness, I recognised a tendency to take my foot off the recovery accelerator, to take my eye off the pursuit of my recovery destination, and inherently what happened within that was that eating disorder would start to grumble away and start to get louder and traffic would be sent down that neural network for the eating disorder. And so this is where compassion is key. Feel your feelings. They are valid. And simultaneously, make sure that your eating disorder is not piggybacking off this time where you are feeling vulnerable and lost. Make sure that you are centering and prioritising 
recovery. In fact, that brings us very naturally to the third point I want to make, which is a reminder that the you who is prioritizing your recovery right now is the you who is prioritizing everything else in your life beyond it. The you that is prioritizing the actions that you need to be taking to uninvite your eating disorder from your life is the you who is prioritizing the people, the places, the things that you want to feel and do and be forever. And I think it's so important in recovery when these big emotions come up that you won. Remember this. Remember that by prioritizing recovery, although that can feel like you're putting a pause on life, actually, yes, in some ways you are, but that is what is necessary in order to genuinely, authentically and freely press play in the future. And two, remember to direct your frustration at the thing which deserves it. It is not recovery which is the problem. It is your eating disorder. And it can be so natural in recovery when you feel like you're not going anywhere and you feel stagnant and you're watching people go and you're in this place of struggle and toughness and hardness and it's just, oh, it can be so natural to turn your frustration towards recovery when actually the thing that you need to be turning your frustration towards is the eating disorder. That is what has caused you to be in this place. And it is not your fault that you have an eating disorder, but it is your responsibility to do the things and to take the action that is necessary to heal from it. And so it's absolutely critical that you are directing that frustration at your eating disorder in the form of those opposite rebellious actions and that you hold close to you the reality that whilst recovery is the thing that feels confronting and uncomfortable and challenging and stagnant right now, actually it is recovery which is going to set you free. The fourth point that I wanted to make was around the concept I spoke of at the start of this video of wanting to want but not wanting in the now. This was something that caused me a huge amount of frustration in recovery and also was the source of some really nasty self-attack. I wanted to want hobbies and relationships and travel and careers and things. I wanted to want those things but actually in the now there was this great chasm between my want to want and my authentic wanting. I wanted to want these things, but the reality was that in that moment, at that time, in the now, on a bodily level, I just didn't want them, either entirely or largely. And I want anyone who is listening to this, who resonates with this feeling, to know that it makes complete and utter sense for a recovering body to not authentically want all those different things, to not want the hobbies and the relationships and the careers and the this and the that, to not want to do yet. And yet is an important word because we come back, it is the recovering state. It makes complete sense that an energy deprived body is not in a place where it authentically desires connection with others or where it is not driven towards pursuit of hobbies and passions and interests, where you don't feel all fired up about stuff. It makes complete sense. And as I say, for some people, this may be totally, a total lack of that wanting. For others, it may just show up in different spaces and places and ways. But I really want anyone who resonates with this to know that it is okay, that it is actually really normal, that it is right and proper, that an energy deprived, recovering, healing body does not authentically and is not yet authentically in a place where it is desiring and wanting of those things. That core you that wants to want, that is that core self who is there, who is alive, who is kicking, who is fiery. And it can really hurt when there is this disparity between that core you and the reality of where your body is in this moment but I implore you to use that gap as a huge driver and motivator to center your actions on recovery, to do the nutritional rehabilitation process. 
And on a personal level, I really recognized that with that progressive nutritional rehabilitation, by getting out of energy deficit, I began to authentically reconnect with that sense of wanting. And it wasn't something I had to force or make happen. Actually, it was exactly that authentic, organic. It was a natural byproduct of coming out of that energy deprived state. So challenge that self attack and get doing what you need to be doing to enable your body to get to a place where it is able to reconnect with that want again. And the last point that I wanted to make was actually a reading, a reading from a book by Emily Maritain. And it's a quote that when I found it in my recovery journey, gave me a huge sense of comfort and reassurance, not just relevant to recovery, but relevant to the human experience of life and this journey that we're all on. And I really want to share it with you here. You're not behind in life. There's no schedule or timetable that we all must follow. It's all made up. Wherever you are right now is exactly where you need to be. Seven billion people can't do everything in exactly the same scheduled order. We are all different with a variety of needs and goals. Some get married early, some get married late, while others don't get married at all. What is early? What is late? Compared with whom? Compared with what? Some want children, others don't. Some want a career. Others enjoy taking care of a house and children. Your life is not on anyone else's schedule. Don't beat yourself up for where you are right now. It's your timeline, not anyone else's, and nothing is off schedule. And so, I really hope that this video has been helpful. It's a topic that I know I would have valued greatly hearing more about and having more reassurance around when I was going through recovery. As I say with all my videos, please do take what helps and leave the rest. And thank you again for your love and support on here. It really, truly does mean the world to me. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope that you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.